Hey there, my name is Crafty Kathy. I am the owner and creator of Kids Vintage Farmhouse in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I am so happy and thankful that you stopped in to craft and spend a little time with me today. I have a mega video. It's packed full of 30 summer DIYs. They are all high-end and vintage inspired, and it is a compilation video, so the DIYs may not be in order, but there's something there for everyone, and I hope that you guys enjoy it. So sit back and hang tight and watch the DIYs, and please let me know which is your favorite. First up is this cabinet door that came out of an RV. And we're going to make something really special and beautiful out of this. But first, I take all the hardware and the handle off of it with my drill. Right here in this upper area where I'm pointing at, that's where the handle was. And I just took some regular spackling, filled that in, and then used my sander to sand it down. Now, there was just a small area, you know, where the paint came off when I sanded. So I used some Waverly's Antique Wax very lightly. I rubbed it on with a rag and rubbed it off. And it looks like it never had a handle there in the first place and that this door has not been touched at all. I got this wood welcome sign from Hobby Lobby, half off, so it was only $2. And I'm gonna use the plaster color by Waverly and just go over the very front of it because I wanted it to be a pretty ivory color. I'm going to glue this sign onto my cabinet door with E6000 on half of it and then I'm going to use that Starbond glue that I absolutely love because it also has a spray accelerator that you spray on the cabinet door and it sticks permanently within 15 seconds. Next, I have a lavender wreath that I got from Hobby Lobby, half off for like seven bucks. And then I have this beautiful ivory colored ribbon. And I got this lace ribbon from burlapfabric.com. I'll leave the link down below. And so I just kind of roll it up on the back. And then my husband got me this sweet little nail gun that makes this so easy. And I popped a couple nails in the back and it's done. This one was quick and easy, and I have a tag on it for $32, and these sell really well in my booth. Staying at home, turn off the phone. I've got this wood pellet sign that I got at Goodwill for a couple of dollars, and I got a new box full of paints and all these different molds and stamps from Milton's Daughter, and I'm going to try out some seashell molds and stamps that I got from her. I'm really excited about these because I noticed I didn't do a lot of like, you know, coastal things this summer, and I'm really feeling it this week because I'm headed to the beach on Thursday. So I wanted to start with the base color and look at this color called cake batter. It's gorgeous. And I wanted to put this all over the sign just so it could have a common background, I guess you could say, and that's gonna be kind of my focal color. Now, you know that the DIY paints are clay-based and they always dry a little bit lighter than what they come out. And this color is like, you're not expecting it. It's really pretty and it does turn out to look like cake batter. When that dries, I take a color called Petal Pusher and I think that's a cute name, but anyways, I'm just gonna kinda do it wishy-washy, kinda here and there. I'm not trying to get a full coat. I'm just wanting to put it mainly on one board and kinda run it up into the other board, if that makes any sense. I'm just kinda mixing my colors around and I'm really just kinda playing at this point. I took the color Petal Pusher and mixed it in a little bit with that white color that's called Vintage Linen, and I got a very light blue color, and I'm just kind of 
adding it just kind of here and there. I still want that darker color of the petal pusher and then this lighter blue just kind of mixed in with it. I'm just shading and kind of making it look like an old beach sign. This is mint chip and I'm very excited to try this when I've been wanting to for so long. It is a beautiful minty color. It reminds me of mint chocolate chip ice cream. And I went down mostly one board like I've been doing on the others and just shading into the other colors like I've been doing the whole time. I'm letting these colors dry in between, you know, adding the next one and I'm using a different brush for every one. This one is called Cowgirl Coral, and it's a beautiful color, so we're going to put it on that last bottom board, and then just kind of here and there, like I've been doing the whole time. I really didn't have any rhyme or reason to what I was doing. I was just kind of mixing the colors, putting them mostly on one board, but kind of mixing them off into the color up above it or underneath it. We're going to use these seashell stamps. <laughs> That's kind of hard to say. And they are beautiful. It comes with two sheets of all this different, like it's got crab shells on it. It's got anemones or however you say it. I cannot say that word, so forgive me. Um, it's got little seahorses on it starfish it's just got everything and it is adorable so the first thing you always want to do when you get a brand new stamp from iod is take a little sanding sponge or sander you know a little sanding paper and just go over it because it helps give you a better coverage when you're stamping i absolutely love the coral it really looks like coral from the bottom of the ocean and i'm using my thin mount and all that is is if you have a few stamps that you want to put in a certain order they stick to that and i just placed about seven different little pieces on there of the coral in the pattern that i wanted and i inked it up and we're going to put one of these on each side of my sign You just flip your thin mount over, place it where you want it, and you hold it steady with one hand and use the other hand to kind of push down and around on the stamp to make sure that you get good coverage. And like I said, I put one on the left side and on the right side of this. Then I use my thin mount to put starfish and coral and a beautiful little what is that called? Sand dollar. All of that across the bottom of the sign. I tell you what, I was really getting happy with these stamps. And I put like another big seashell, one of those conch shells, another sand dollar, and some cute little horsies on there too. I love playing with anything IOD because I know it's going to be perfect and professional every time. Look at this gorgeous mold that has all the seashells and all that beautiful stuff on it too. So we're going to put a couple of these, one in each corner of my sign. I did like a few little seashells and I did like one of the little sand dollars and one of the starfish because I wanted one in each corner. And all I did was just use my clay and you just push it down and it comes out perfect every time. But I always put down cornstarch in my molds because it helps it not stick. Then you just flip it over and they come out very easily and perfect every time. I use my tight bond wood glue and I put a little bit of that on the back of each one and I place each one in a corner in no particular order and you just leave it alone for a few hours and it'll be hardened. I use my Cricut to make a stencil and all you do is just make a regular sign or whatever with your Cricut like you normally do except for you peel off the words and then you lay that down and that's what your stencil is. I used this gel stuff, it was this cheap stuff off of Amazon that's supposed to be like the chalk couture stuff and it was hardened and did not work right. So I took my vintage linen, that color by DIY, and I stenciled it so that it would, you know, look right at the top. And I did that color in that vintage linen, which is like a white color. Under the word mercantile, it's kind of hard to see. 
but I have a stencil laid out there that says like towels, lotions, gifts, souvenirs. And I also did that in the white color, which is called vintage linen. Since I had it out, I just used it that way. And when I stencil, I pounce it. I go up and down and that way it doesn't bleed out underneath that stencil. I used my black chalk couture paste to do the word mercantile because I really like to use like the paste because it's perfect every time and it just has a really nice look. I used my color called cake batter again to paint the little starfish that's down in the bottom. And one of my sweet subscribers, Miss Wanda Cruz, she lives at the beach, actually. And she sent me these shells in the mail, and I just love them. And I'm going to use them on my sign so I can think about her every time I look at it. And then I have these little hooks that I got off of Amazon. And I'm just going to drill four of them down at the bottom. Because this is going to be a sign that goes out by our swimming pool where we hang our towels and such. I absolutely love the way that this turned out. And guys, this is why I like the DIY paint so much. It's so pigmented and beautiful. And in the description box below, I'm going to leave the links for Milton's daughter. Her name is Lori, and she's the only person that I get all of my IOD and paint from because she's amazing. And she gives my subscribers 10% off. So, you guys actually have nothing to lose. You should go try out some of these little seashells and seahorse molds and stamps. They are so cute, and they have a lot of character and definition to each one. And have I mentioned that I would love to have you in my YouTube family? Oh, yeah. All you got to do is hit that little red subscribe button, and you're in. And there's a bell beside it, and when you hit that little bell, YouTube's going to let you know every time that I put out a video. So hit that subscribe button and commit to me. We always have love, laughs, and DIYs around here. So let's keep going. The next one is this wooden crate that I got from Walmart, and I did the reverse canvas mode where I just took like a Dollar Tree frame and I painted it with the antique wax and I used burlap to stencil Farmer's Market on the front of it. Now, if you'll look, it's got a big old sticker on the side of it and I had already wrote country apples on the inside. So that looks terrible and we're gonna cover that up real good with some truffle paint by Waverly. I didn't have much to cover up and that truffle paint matched the color really well. So I just covered up that part that said country apples and we're good to go. I'm going to use this for a big display on my arm wire in my booth. I didn't want to waste a bunch of floral foam filling this up. So I just took a regular Amazon box and glued it down to the bottom so I could stick my floral foam on top of that and not have to use so much of it. Then I simply glued three pieces of the floral foam on the top, and I got these at Hobby Lobby for six bucks for six of them. I have some lavender from Hobby Lobby, and I think I ended up spending about seven dollars when I got the 50% off, and I just cut the stems off, and I always start by placing the tallest ones in the middle. Then I've got another bouquet that I spent about five bucks for. And I'm not the greatest really at doing florals. You just have to have confidence and trust yourself. You put the tallest stuff in the middle and then you always want things to match up on one side. For instance, if you put a certain flower on your right side, you wanna put the exact same flower on the same place on the left side. You just want it to match up in that way. Now. I filled this in with this baby's breath just as a little filler. I just nipped them off and just kind of placed them here and there. I also had some eucalyptus stems and all of these picks come from Hobby Lobby. I ended up actually spending about $25 to $30 worth of flowers inside this arrangement and that was with the 50% off. Since I didn't totally cover the back, what I did was take a burlap ribbon that I get from Walmart. I laid it across that back part, and you see on the sides there, I just laid it outside the crate where it's kind of falling over the sides. And then I cut down just these little skewer sticks, and that's what I stick in that to help it hold it down and hold it in place. 
Now, I didn't mind spinning this much when it came to this arrangement because it's going to be a very main focal point in my booth. And I just put a higher price on it. That way, maybe it won't sell because I didn't really want to sell it. But if you have something that you don't want to sell, you just put a higher price on it. What it would be worth to you to sell. I hope you guys like this one. I think I put a price tag of like $65 on it because like I said, I hope it doesn't sell, but that's what it would be worth to me if someone wanted it. The next one is really easy. It's this little duck basket that I got and I did it in a few videos back. It was the brown wicker color. We put some shellac on it and I spray painted it with my Rust-Oleum matte two times. And here I'm just doing the exact same thing. I start with my taller ones in the middle and then go around. And all of this was eucalyptus. And then at the very end, I added about three or four sprigs of lavender just to give it a little pop of color. And I also added one or two little pieces of baby's breath. I glued the floral foam down with some hot glue because it is top heavy. Then I make a simple bow in the middle. Um, it's just a cause bow and you make a figure eight and push down in the middle and tie it. Then I'm gonna take the end off of one of the skewers and cut it and I'm gonna glue that to the back of my bow. That way I can stick the little skewer down inside, you know, at the side and it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be kind of you know in the front of the flowers and not kind of around the duck's neck or anything tacky i think this is adorable i'll sell it for 28 dollars in my booth the last one is more or less a hack I dropped this, it's just decor or maybe like a paperweight. I dropped it and broke that round ball part on the top. I put it back together with E6000 and you see how the bottom is kind of cracked. It's a soft, almost like a chalky material. So I take some clay after I let the E6000 dry totally and repair it. I take the clay and I use my fingers to smooth around that clay. And to get it absolutely 100% smooth, you use a little bit of water on your fingers and it will make it perfectly smooth. I took it outside and spray painted it with the Rust-Oleum two times um, matte black. And then I'm going over it with the vintage linen after it dries, of course. And I only did one coat of the vintage linen because I want to do a crackle and I want that black to really show through. This is Pentark Crackle, and I got it from Milton's daughter. It's got two parts, a one and a two. The first part, I'm going to put on it, and you just go in one motion, one time. You don't swipe back and forth over it, and you go in the same direction. That's what makes the crackle. You let it totally dry, and when it's dry, you use the second part. And the second part is basically like a sealer, and it's a glossy type sealer. And this turned out beautiful. You would never know it ever had a crack in it. And this will be sold for 12 bucks in my booth. And I didn't do any bloopers this week, guys, because I'm actually on vacation. But I will have a thrift haul of everything that I buy here in Florida. And I love you guys, and I hope y'all have a blessed week. And I promise I'll make up the bloopers next week. Lately, I have been changing up my own decor in my home to go more with a cottage style theme. It's a sweet, soft, feminine decor style, and there's a lot of beautiful earthy tones, cozy goodness, and a lot of flowers. So let's jump on in. The other day when I was strolling through the thrift store, I found this magnetic board. And I really like the design on the outside, but the colors are totally not my style and they don't go with my home. So we're going to give it a little up shackle. And the first thing that I'm going to do is use my home decor white Adirondack and I gave it two coats on the outside. 
The middle part that has the chevron pattern had a great big T on it that somebody had made with a Cricut machine. So I pulled that off and had to use a very fine sandpaper to get off that T as good as I could. And then I had to go over that part three times just to cover that up. I went to my printer and I printed off this gorgeous picture onto a piece of rice paper. Now rice paper can be used just like I do my napkins in decoupaging. You can use it to decoupage it onto anything and it doesn't have the wrinkles and the bother that you have with napkins. So actually it's a lot easier to decoupage. So I wet the end of my little paintbrush like I always do, and I run it down the corners. And what I'm going to do is just rip that because anytime that you're decoupaging something, you don't want straight edges. You want it to be ripped because it just looks more natural that way. Then I just laid my picture down exactly where I wanted it on my little magnetic board. And then I go and put a little bit of Mod Podge on the top. Actually, I put a pretty good coat. I don't want it like sopping wet and goopy, but you do want it to be a little bit thicker because rice paper is heavier than your napkins. Then I just smoothed it out with my little brayer to make sure that we didn't have any wrinkles. I have this little pad of distressing oxide and it's kind of like our antique wax. I just picked a lighter color. The color that I have is called Weathered Twigs. It's a very light brown, and I just went around the whole thing and distressed it where I wanted to. I pulled out some of my IOD transfer books, and these come from different ones. I just wanted to put some wording on this because my picture had some French writing on it, and a lot of the IOD transfers have French writing on them, and they're so easy to add to any of your decor to make it beautiful. All you do is just pull it away from the white backing, and then you lay it down where you want to, and you use that little tool that they send to you, or you can use a credit card, you can even use your fingernail, and just scratch until it comes off onto your decor. Then when the transfer is adhered, you use that piece of plastic that it was on and kind of rub it over the top of it in a circular, mo circular motion. I can't talk today. And that's called burnishing it. And then I had some 320 sandpaper. And so it's a very light grit. And I just went over it very smoothly because to me, it makes the transfers look a little vintagey too. And you know, that's right up my alley. I took some Waverly Mineral Chalk Paint and I painted this cute little crown that I had made from a mold with resin last week. And after it had dried, I took some of my Debbie's DIY White Wax and I'm just gonna go over that cute little crown with my distressing brush and then I wait a few seconds and then I wipe some of it back off. Then I just use my Starbond glue to put it down on my board. And I am so excited to get to use my brand new mold. This is the IOD mold. I don't remember the name of it, but it's the one with the birds on it. And I'm going to use my DAS clay, and I'm just going to make some simple molds, and we're going to put these on that magnetic board. Now, the IOD molds are very, very easy to work with. They have like a little lip on the end of them where you can just push your finger and get a perfect mold every time. Then after I get them all finished, I go and pop them in the freezer for at least 15 minutes so that they can kind of harden up and it makes them so easy to come out. Now look how easy they come out of this. You just have to barely push up on the back of the mold and they just pop right out and they're beautiful and perfect and they have the most gorgeous detail that you've ever seen. Now I know that these molds are a little bit more expensive, but I'm just telling you guys, they are amazing. You can use them over and over so you can really get your use out of them. And especially if you sell your crafts, they're really worth having. 
I'm going to leave a link in the description box. If you go to the store named Milton's Daughter and use Crafty Kathy 10, you get 10% off all your IOD products. I'm going to paint my birds my favorite color, which is Apothecary by DIY. And I just love this paint. It's clay-based and it goes on so easy and it's just smooth as a baby's bottom. I ordered these napkins from my friend Teresa and I think that these are gorgeous. It's one of my favorite napkins I've ever seen. And I do the same thing as before where I wet my brush and I just go around the patterns of where I want to tear the napkin at. I wet it and then I just tear off the piece that I want. Now it's time to put everything on my magnetic board. I'm going to use tight bond because I really like the way that it goes on. It's very easy to work with. And I've already got my beautiful birds laid down where I want them to go. And so I just put a little bit of tight bond on the back and place them where they go. I also put this cute little honeybee on there that I had made last week with the resin. Now I'm going to add my little pieces of napkin. So most napkins have two or three plies. These had three plies. So I just put a dab of Mod Podge on my pointer finger and my thumb and kind of rub it. And then I use that to separate the pieces. And so when I get down to just one ply, I just lay it down. First, I put my Mod Podge down and then I lay it down and I use my Saran Wrap over the top of it to make sure there's no wrinkles. Then I grab my Debbie's DIY white wax and I rub it over each of the clay pieces and then I just wipe off the excess and it's so beautiful because that white wax gets down in all the crevices and you can see every little detail on those birds. Every little feather, everything is so exaggerated and it's so beautiful. And that's all I did. I hope you like it. Here we go with number one. My first DIY is going to be this beautiful wall clock that I thrifted. I think it's so pretty. And when I first started on it, I wanted to really accentuate this beautiful detail that's around it. I think that is so lovely. I think I only paid like $1.99 for this thing. So I just grabbed it and I took all the pieces apart. A lot of times, if I find a beautiful clock that's round, I don't necessarily even use it for a clock. I thought that this one would make a beautiful wall decor, but I always keep all those pieces just in case I need it when I do happen to be putting a clock together. And honey, I'm telling you, this thing was a mess to try to get the front off of it. I don't know what was going on. It was some kind of hard plastic. And whenever I put it, the heat to it, it like started curling up on me. And I was going to save it until it did that. And I was like, yeah, you got to go, baby girl. So I just pulled it off. I used that heat to loosen up that glue on the back of it and popped her right off there. I have this gorgeous picture of these pretty little birds and it's on rice paper. All I do is use rice paper and print the picture off on my regular printer and I use the front of that little clock 
to know exactly how big I needed to cut this. And if I'm going to decoupage, which is what I'm going to do with this rice paper, I always rip my edges because you don't want any straight edges when you're decoupaging anything because it just looks more natural this way and it makes it so pretty. Then I took my little block of wax. You can use just a cheap old Dollar Tree candle. It does not matter. And you go around because this is a much easier way, I think, to distress. Whenever you put this wax on anything, whatever it hits, it's not going to hold the paint. So at the end, you just kind of scrape it off and you naturally have a beautiful way of distressing something. I pulled out my Debbie's DIY paint and this green color is called Apothecary. It is one of my favorite colors. It is beautiful and breathtaking and this paint is amazing. I gave it two full coats of the color Apothecary. I took the Waverly color called Ivory and we're just going to hit the middle of this clock because a very little portion of my picture is going to show and I want it to be the exact same color of the background of that little birdie picture that I'm going to decoupage on there. Now if you like to decoupage and you haven't used rice paper, it's a game changer. Rice paper is so much easier to use than napkins because it's a little bit thicker and hardier and it doesn't wrinkle and make all that mess that sometimes you get with napkins. Now, all I did was put down a little bit of Mod Podge and slap that picture right down. I always start from the center and kind of go out just to make sure I don't have any, you know, bubbles or crinkles in my paper. Then I just took a razor knife and kind of cut around the edges to make sure that I had a good proper edge and that there wasn't anything sticking up or looking crazy. And I got some little fairy lights that I get off of Amazon. You get about, I don't know, 15 packs in there and there's 20 little lights on each string and they're very inexpensive. They're in my Amazon store in case you want any of these. I think they're beautiful, and I love to use them in a lot of my different DIYs. Now, there was a little hole that's right there in the top that was perfect to slide that wire through there. And I just glued the little battery pack to the back of it, pulled it through, and I wound it around about two times so that it would go around my picture very nicely. And the good thing about these little fairy lights, if, if you need to put a little dot of glue to hold them, it's not going to fry that wire and mess up your whole lights. So I just put a couple of little dabs of glue, and that was plenty enough to hold it because it's a wire, so it doesn't need much to hold it. And after I put the little lights in, I still felt like it was needing something. So I grabbed some of this little Spanish moss. It just came from the Dollar Tree. And I put a little bit at the bottom to kind of make it look like a little birdie nest. And that kind of just gave it that little sweet touch that I thought that it was needing. If there's any that's sticking out and looks crazy, I just kind of trim them off with the little scissors there. Then I simply put a little dab of glue on the back and put my battery pack right there. That way you can flip it on and off with no problem. And I put my mirror back in and let me tell y'all what I did. I started putting everything back together and I had to use my screwdriver to put my little screws back in to hold the mirror. Well, Kathy cracked the mirror and I was like, way to go big girl, but I wasn't about to stop with this DIY because I thought it was beautiful. And you know what? A lot of people don't even like mirrors or, you know, like glass or anything in their stuff. So I thought, hey, leave it out. It's still going to look good. And I just used a little wet baby wipe to go around and kind of distress. Now, it made that darker color underneath, which if you remember, it was black and kind of a coppery color. It made it pop right out and go, look at me. Here I am. I'm beautiful. Then I had to hit it with my Debbie's DIY White Wax. If there's one product that I cannot live without, it's this product. And it seals in that paint, makes it kind of calm down the color a little bit, if you will. It kind of mutes it, and it gives it this beautiful cottage sheet kind of vibe. I, it's just beautiful. And then I just wiped off the excess with the rag. 
Now, if you've been around my channel for a while, you know me, I can't stop once I get going on a DIY. So I thought, hey, what if I add one of these little solar wood flowers? I liked that ivory color because I felt that it was just muted enough to make everything perfect. And then I still wanted to add something. So I took some little pearls and I just put three on the four different corners. And don't you know, I didn't even record that part. I thought I did. But here's what it looked like when the pearls was on there. <laughs> I hope you guys like this one. I absolutely am mad about it. When I'm showing you guys my DIYs and staging them, I always like to put a little old vintage picture. That's me when I graduated nursing school 20 years ago, and man, how time flies. And I'm so into anything vintage, so I love to stick little vintagey whatnots in my pictures whenever I'm taking it for you guys. I hope y'all enjoy this one. I don't know which way I like it better. It's beautiful with the lights on or with the lights off. But let's just jump right on in to DIY number two. This one is an old pickle jar that I had upcycled a while back ago. I didn't really like it. So we're gonna use some Dixie Belle Slick Stick. Now, this is the first time I've ever started using it. It is specifically for glass and things that are hard to paint, like glass, metal, that kind of thing. And it pretty much does what it says. It's a slick stick. It, anything that's slick, it helps that paint stick. You know what I'm saying? And I put just one coat on this and on the top, and guys, the paint went on like a dream. So this slick stick is another one of my favorite products. Then I put a little bit of baking soda and I put a little bit of paint and the paint that I'm using is home decor color called oatmeal. I kind of do half and half. So if I do one teaspoon of the baking soda, I'm going to do one teaspoon of the paint. Now it's just to thicken that paint up a little bit. It kind of makes the jar or whatever you're putting it on look a little like concretey, you know? And here's another little tip, guys, if y'all didn't know. Take Vaseline, just a little bit of Vaseline, and go around the tops of your paint jars whenever you're finished with them because you ever have where paint gets all, like, cracky and flaky? You won't do it with that Vaseline. I'm just telling you, it's a good little move, and somebody taught it to me, and so I love to teach it to you guys and help y'all out. So I'm just gonna stir this up real good. And when I get it good and stirred up, I want the consistency of like a thick pancake batter. It's not gonna run off of my brush whenever I hold it up. Now, my first coat that I put on is just to get the paint on. It's nothing special. Basically, you just slap that first coat on there. But on my second coat, after that first coat is totally dried, I do another coat and I use this sponge dabber. I guess is what you call it. It's just a sponge, but I'm just pretty much dabbing that on there. And that kind of is what gives it that concrete -y look. You know, that look that we like on all of our jars. Or some of us do. I mean, it's, it's just your personal preference. But I think it's really pretty. Plus, when the paint's a little bit thicker like that, you can't see any kind of lines or imperfections. So I let that second coat dry and look at this beautiful piece of rice paper that my friend Teresa sent me. Now Teresa sells napkins and rice paper and that kind of stuff and I'm gonna leave her link in the description down below cause she has good prices and some beautiful stuff. Now remember I told you that I like to rip the edges to make it look natural? The easiest way to do that is to wet them. So I wet the end of a little paintbrush and then I use my fingers and very softly and carefully rip around the image that I'm needing for my decoupage. Now I'm gonna take this pretty girl and I am gonna put her on this jug. 
a jug. Man, you can tell I'm from Tennessee. It's a jar. <laughs> so I put down a little bit of Mod Podge. And like I said, the rice paper, it works like a dream. It's so easy. I just do a little bit up top and then stuck her down. And then I put a little bit at the bottom. And you always want to make sure to get those edges sealed really well with that Mod Podge. That way it won't never come up. And I still do use Saran Wrap if I get wrinkles. But you very seldom get many wrinkles wrinkles when you use the rice paper. Now up at the top of this jar, since it was curved the way it was, I cut three just straight cuts in it and it makes it a little bit easier to lay it down. And I did use my saran wrap up there too because some areas are a little bit more tricky, you know, but you don't want no wrinkles. And then over here at the side, I just stuck another little rose kind of off to the side so it would look like the picture's going all the way around the jug. The jug. And on the front, I had two small little butterflies that was on this picture, and I just stuck those in front of her. Now, I gave the lid two coats of Ballet Slipper is the color. It's that pretty muted pink color by Waverly. And I did put that slick stick on that top of that jar, too, just because, you know, it's a slick surface, and it don't usually hold paint so well. Then I had to grab my Debbie's DIY White Wax, y'all. I've had this jar forever. And guys, I do so many DIYs, and I'm not even halfway through this jar. I'm not kidding you. It is a little bit more expensive. I want to say it's about 15 bucks for the jar, but it lasts you forever. So you just rub it on, and you rub it back off to whatever preference, how much you want on there. And it just mutes down that color a little bit and gives it a little vintage vibe. I wrapped some jute twine around the top of it, and I had to get all the little fuzzies off, so I used a lighter to do that, and it just burns them off perfectly. And then the last thing I done was I took some of this ribbon. I guess you would call it ribbon. I got it at the Dollar Tree, and it's almost like... I really don't even know what you would call this stuff, but I mean, you can see it. I, I really don't even know what you would call it, but I just kind of cut it up because I felt like the jar needed something else. And so I just ended up like fooling with it for a little while. And I finally settled on kind of tying it in a very loose, tacky kind of, you know, like a shabby chic type bow. I found this little flower petal with the pearl in the middle somewhere. I don't know where it came from. And so I like to add a little 3D effect to my stuff. So I stuck it kind of on the side where it looks like it's in her hair with the rest of the flowers. And then I did use a very light sandpaper to go over it and kind of scratch it up and give it that vintagey look. I hope you like it. If you're new here, or if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what in the world are you waiting for? I would love to have you as part of my family. All you gotta do is hit that little red subscribe button and you're in. It's totally free. And if you hit that little bell beside it, YouTube's gonna let you know when I put out a video. And if you enjoy the content, give me a big thumbs up because it really helps support my channel. Now let's get into the next one. This is a little planter uh, that I got, little watering can that I got from my thrift store for $1. Now it's that metal that's kind of hard to paint, so I gave it that slick stick also. And then I just painted it with the exact same mixture of the baking soda and the oatmeal colored paint that I had mixed up before. I had it sitting around, so I figured I might as well. And I only gave it two coats of this, and I did the exact same thing. I daubed it on. Now, on this one, since it was a little bit harder to paint, I didn't just swipe on that first coat of paint like I did with the jar. I started right away with that daubing motion, and I did that two times. And now I'm going to use some IOD transfers. Now, these are called Redoubt 2. 
And my friend Lori over at Milton's Daughter sent me this. And I thank you so much, Lori. This is beautiful. And guys, the thing about the IOD transfers is you don't have to use that whole page. You can use little bits and pieces of it or just the words. And it makes any project beautiful. Now, I'm going to leave Lori's link down in the description box below. Her store is called Milton's Daughter. That's where I get anything IOD from. And she's awesome. She's quick to get it to you. And you will not be disappointed. And let me tell you what else. She gives my subscribers 10% off your IOD products. So, y'all make sure that you go see Miss Lori down at Milton's Daughter. And let her know that Crafty Kathy sent you her way. So, I finally found the one that I wanted. All I needed was a little piece. And these are so easy to use. All you do is just lay it on whatever surface you're going to put it on. And then they send you a little tool and you just have to scratch it with that little tool. And it comes right off. Almost like a sticker except for it's so beautiful, guys. Like I'm telling you, it will make any DIY just pop. And a lot of times, to be honest, I do use that tool but I kind of prefer my fingernail a lot of times. It's just easier to get it off. And then when you get the image off, you burnish it. And burnish just means where you take that little clear film that it comes on and rub it on the top of it to get it to make sure it's sticking real good. Now, I picked this word, and it's from a different part of the book. Like I said, you can use bits and pieces, and I just put this down on the bottom. It's a French word, so don't ask me what it is because... Us Tennessee guys, we don't speak French. Unless you're talking about French fries now, that's another story. But anyways, I put another little rose on the back, and it's from a totally different part of the book. And from another book called Brocant, I had this beautiful little butterfly, and I thought it went perfect with this watering can, so I put it on, kind of on the side there. I added another little rose to the side and then going up the spout, I put like another little phrase that went right along with the other French words that I put on there. Then I used my Waverly ink, which is their black colored chalk paint. And I went all the way around the rims of this little watering can to kind of give it like an enamel look. But I use my finger. It's my favorite form of distressing. You know, we always joke about that. Instead of a paintbrush, a lot of times I use my finger because it just distresses everything perfectly. So I went around all the edges with my finger and I think that turned out so pretty. And that's all I did to this one because it didn't need anything else. And I hope you like this one. I think it's just cute as can be. I got this little basket from the thrift store and I decided to paint it. So I taped off the bottom third part of it. And the upper part, I painted it with the color called Ivory Bisque, which is just an ivory color. And then the bottom, it was called Coastal Sage. And y'all know I've got that little Etsy store called Kathy's Crafty Boutique, where I have all that sublimation prints that are in there. And I decided to do a little sublimation. It's been a while since we've been doing our sublimation, and y'all know how I love it. So I printed these two beautiful roses out on this sublimated paper, and all I'm going to do is just cut it out here. I'm actually going to put it on this runner that came from the Dollar Tree because it's 100% polyester, and to do sublimation, you get a better result if you use at least 70% polyester. So all I have to do is lay my print down and put my wax paper down over top of it and then my Cricut hot press for 60 seconds on 385. Now don't forget, come visit my shop if you guys need anything that's sublimated. I have beautiful prints. And like I said, it's been a while since we've talked about the sublimation, but I absolutely love the way it always turns out. And look at this. Voila! 
So I just cut my little print out and I'm going to put it right in the middle of my basket. All I do is use a little small dab of hot glue on the corners to hold it down. And I think this turned out beautiful, guys. After I got it glued down, I did use a little bit of the Debbie's DIY White Wax, mostly on that darker part on the bottom, that Coastal Sage. It's kind of an apothecary color. It almost came out looking like that apothecary. That's absolutely all I had to do to this, and I love the way that it turned out. This will sell very fast because the baskets are always, always a fast seller, and you can always find a ton of them at the thrift store. If y'all stuck through this whole video, I just want to say thank you, and I love each and every one of y'all, and I am so thankful for all the support and love that y'all show me. A lot of times when my own family's not like family, y'all are that to me, and I am so thankful that I do have a family with y'all that I can come to and share my life with, and I just love y'all from the bottom of my heart. This is a little basket that I found at the thrift store about a year ago. As you can see, it's a duck, and I use it in my kitchen to put my chicken's eggs in. So, I took it outside, and I gave it two coats of a spray shellac so that brownish red color wouldn't come through. And with two coats of the Rust-Oleum Two Times Ultra Matte White, she's got a beautiful new look. And see, sometimes it doesn't take much. And it's the same with this beautiful bird. I've had her for quite a while. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with her or when I was going to get around to her. But I've really, really gotten into birds lately and the whole cottage decor theme. And she's perfect. So as you see, she's already got some brown on her. I decided what I'm going to do is kind of make her look like a concrete bird in a way. So what I did was I took the truffle, which is by Waverly, and I'm just going to paint over the parts where I would distress at because that brown would be coming through. And I pretty much kind of distressed over the parts that are already colored brown, like the little part on her tail, the little feathers on her wings. I did go around where her beak would be and then around the bottom part. Then I mixed up some of the mineral chalk paint with some baking soda. Now I never measure mine, but I do kind of half and half. So in other words, if I put one teaspoon of paint, I'm gonna put one teaspoon of baking soda. It all depends on how thick I wanted it. So as you can see, I pretty much did half and half. You just stir it up really good. And for my first coat, I'm just gonna get the color on there and that's all I'm looking for with my very first coat. I ended up giving her a total of three coats in all. And I always make sure on the second and third coat to kind of pounce it on with my brush. What I mean by pounce it on is put a lot of paint on the end of my brush and literally just pounce it. Because if you notice, that's what gives it a good texture and a concrete looking finish. It just gives it that look and the mineral color is perfect to make anything look like concrete. I also had two little gnomes from the Dollar Tree and they've been sitting on my desk forever. And while I was doing that concrete technique on my birdie boo, I decided to do that on my little gnomes and I could stick them in my flower pots. So what I did with them is go all over them with a good coat of the truffle. And when it dried, I used that same treatment, which is the mineral chalk paint mixed in with the baking soda and I pounce them about two to three times really good. And when I finished painting them, my little birdie boo was dry, so I took some of my Debbie's DIY white wax and I stuck it to her. I put it all over her pretty thick like, 
and then I just very lightly wiped it off with my little rag. And I like to use microfiber cloths, that's what they tell you to use, and it just seems like it's a little bit softer and it's easier. And also, when I put the mineral chalk paint on my little gnomes, I did not use the Debbie's DIY wax on them because I wanted them to have that grayish finish whenever they were done. And I hope you guys like these. Super easy. My last DIY is my favorite. It's this makeup table, it's wicker, and I got a mirror that goes with it. Now I got this at that antique flea market that I stopped at a couple of weeks ago, and I think I only paid about $40 or maybe a little bit less than that, but I really like it and I wanted to upcycle it. So I took it outside and I gave it a total of three coats of the Rust-Oleum Times 2 Ultra Matte White. I just think that white wicker is so pretty. And it was already white, but it was a little grungy white, if you know what I mean. You couldn't really tell the difference, but I could if I saw it. And I always tape my mirror off really good whenever I spray it. And of course, I sprayed it too. I wanted to show you the difference because you may say, why did she even spray it? It looked fine before, but I wanted to show you. The left side has been sprayed and the right side is not. Now in the light, you could tell the difference. So it was really hard for me to tape this while I was doing this project because it was so big and had so many pieces to it. And my camera kept falling. But I did my napkins first and I had them strategically laid out the way that I wanted to use them. And I just used my Mod Podge. You put a good amount of Mod Podge on the wicker where you want it. And then you make sure you pull apart your three different plies off of your napkins. I also used a brush that was damp. And like I said, I put down my Mod Podge and you just lay down your napkin and then you use your saran wrap and lay it on top of your napkin and you pull that saran wrap together tightly. And that way, the napkin just kind of sinks into that wicker. And then you always have to be careful when you're taking your saran wrap off of your napkin because it can stick too and you'll pull it right back off. So once again, I'm doing that with the little butterfly here. I take all the backing off of it. I put down my Mod Podge and lay it down. And then I use my Saran Wrap and pull that Saran Wrap taut, you know, so that it just kind of sinks into the wicker. Now it's very important to use the Saran Wrap or else it's going to stick to your fingers and everything else. And so when I use my saran wrap, I just pull it from two different directions. I hope it's that you can understand what I'm doing here. It's really hard to explain some things. It's so much easier just to watch me, I think, sometimes because words don't make sense. I don't know if that even, you know what I'm saying? It's like it doesn't, I can't get to articulate what I'm trying to say. But you just pull your saran wrap from two different directions tautly and it will stick on there really well. And the molds are super easy. You just put the tight bond on the back of them wherever you want them to go and you spread it really well. And then you just lay it down where you want it to go. And what I did was took just a simple piece of masking tape and very loosely put that masking tape over the top of it so that it would hold that mold down overnight. And then the next thing in the morning, 
it's really well and stuck on there. And I did the exact same thing to the bottom of this makeup table, which it was really tough for me to be able to record that part, so I didn't. I just did the exact same thing there as I did to the top. And of course, I had to use my Debbie's DIY white wax on my molds. So all I did was the same thing like before, just brushed it on and very lightly brushed it off. I covered up the mirror so it wouldn't be right in your glare and it's really hard to film a good picture or take a good picture of a mirror, but I hope that you guys really like this one. It was my favorite of all of these DIYs and I absolutely love it. I'm always proud when I do any kind of furniture. Also, when I finished, I felt like something was missing. So I took the color Apothecary, which is that green color, and went around the rim of the mirror here. And I think that was the exact perfect thing that it needed. It's still very minimal, but very beautiful. And I love this new cottage decor. If you guys have stuck through to the end of this video, I thank you so much for being here. I appreciate every single one of y'all, and I pray that God blesses you in the coming week. I hope everybody has a beautiful and blessed Mother's Day. I love all you guys, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I will be seeing y'all very soon. And I have Sabby singing for you today. Everybody's been saying that they miss him, so I thought that he would do a little popping in since he is our executive producer. If you like flea markets, thrift hauls, antiques, antique booths, you like to DIY, or it's just a pastime, you are in the right spot, my friend. And I welcome you with open arms. We got a lot to cover, so let's do it. So, you know, this is that rooster bell that I got at the antique flea market that I went to. And sometimes it doesn't take much to, you know, get something spruced up and make it look beautiful again. Look at this guy after I took him outside and gave him two coats of that Rust-Oleum two times in the matte black. And then I also put a uh, clear enamel over it just for some protection because he's going to be outside. And I had cut the bell off or the, the rope to the bell, I'm sorry. Um, so I just put a new one on with some jute that I had purchased at Walmart because I just wanted it simple. And that's all I had to do to this guy. He turned out great. I did burn off the very end of that jute with the lighter just so that it wouldn't kind of fray as much and I would burn off the little fuzzies that come along with it. Hey, when the chickens hear that bell, they know that it's mealworm time and they already come a running. And I stuck it right on a post at the front of my craft studio. It's hard for me to call that first one and this second one even DIYs. They're really not. It's just little things that I got from the antique flea market, and I'm doing these for my own home to kind of spruce it up for the summertime. So this is a gorgeous flower pot, and I forgot to take a picture of it before I painted it. But it was gray, and it was all crusty and falling, you know, the paint falling apart. It just looked awful. So I gave it two coats of my Rust-Oleum two times matte black, and then I'm using a chalk couture stencil. It has a chicken on the top of it, and it says, feels like home. <laughs> I 
that fits me perfectly, doesn't it? But all I wanted on there was just the chicken and the word home. So I did that with my chalk couture, and then I flipped it over and just put simply the chicken on the other side. And that's all I did to this one. It was so super easy. That's why it's so hard to even call it a DIY. And then I stuck some of my succulents in there. Last month at the thrift store, I found that cute little boy and girl. They're little gardeners, and they had like a little spike on the bottom, and you stick them down in your flower pot. So I just stuck those in there, too, to give it, you know, a little bit more vibe because my succulents look pitiful in there by themselves. <laughs> But anyways, I, when I first saw those that with a spike on the bottom, I thought they were wine corks. Good grief. I don't know what's wrong with me. Now, look at this that I got. It already had some natural rust on it. Not enough for me. It's an oak clock. And when I got to looking at it, I thought, why did I buy this? What am I going to do with this? So, I got a little idea what I want to do with it. So, I flipped it over and i popped the back off of it and look at that rust on the back to me that's beautiful but why would somebody keep their clock outside i don't know maybe it was just in a basement that had a lot of moisture or something i don't know but i took it i only paid like a buck for it or something and to me rust is beautiful <laughs> so anyways i did pop the back off of that eventually and when i flipped it over and I started poking around and realized that that was paper, and I was like, I really don't want to mess with that. So, I believe I'm just going to paint over that part. And I took the little mechanism that makes the clock work out of it. I can always use that for another DIY. And then, I just printed out on Google, I pulled up old scale images, which is what this is. It looks like to me that someone just took a picture of an old scale but it didn't stop me. I just printed it out on regular printer paper and I got it to the size that I needed to go on the front there. Then I took my ivory chalk paint that is by Home Decor and I just gave this two coats on the front. I didn't want like it, anything perfect. I'm just trying to cover up that uh, paper where you can see the numbers because I don't want those bleeding through whenever I put my printable on there. And like I said before, this wasn't enough rust for me, so I just took a really old, cheap paintbrush from the Dollar Tree. It's just one of their little, I think they call them stencil brushes, but I don't use them for anything except for junk brushes because I don't like the way that they paint or anything. All you do to make rust, faux rust, is just put a little Mod Podge down and then you put cinnamon over the top of it and just kind of sprinkle off the excess. And when the Mod Podge is still wet, one of my favorite ways to do that is to use my finger. And I told you guys, sometimes you just got to get in there with your finger and either to shade stuff out and in this case, make rust. And you just kind of push it into the Mod Podge and it makes a rust that is extremely believable. So I just went around to any spots where I wanted extra rust because you know it had a little bit on there. And then if I wanted to add rust, I did that also in certain spots. And I tried to pay particular attention to places where rust would naturally accumulate anyways kind of like there along the top where the little piece goes in and you know just places where rust would naturally be anyways and I think it was very believable and once I started using my finger to kind of blend it in I just gave up on that paintbrush because the finger does such a better job I used my little Elmer's glue stick and went all around the front of that scale and I just put that little faux face on there and I didn't use the hands that I had from the clock because this one already had little hands on it and before I popped the front back on it 
I put a little bit of Mod Podge that had some of that cinnamon on it. I just kind of ran it around, if you can see, just in certain little spots and very, very lightly on the front of that just to make it look like it had rust also. I have a pie pan that I got from the Dollar Tree and I flipped it over and set it on a big piece of wood and just beat a nail down in it three times to make three holes. And I did add some of that cinnamon to it to make it look believable, make it look like it had rust. And I also purchased a chain that comes out at the Dollar Tree right now when a lot of plants are being hung. And I put that chain into three equal parts. I actually counted how many links so that it would be perfectly even. And do you know that the bottom of this clock must have been attached to something or it had a bottom on it, but it had a hole and it was so perfect. I had an S hook that I stuck right up into the bottom of that clock. And then I took that chain and just hooked it right onto that S hook. And guys, that's all there was to my faux scale. And I really liked the way that it turned out. And it's gonna go here at my house, so I wasn't looking for perfection. I just, I was really happy with the outcome though. Then I took the top part of that chain from the Dollar Tree, and that's what I hung to the very top part of that clock. And it had a little handle up there. It's like it was made for me to make it into a faux scale. <laughs> so I hope you guys like this. I'm walking down the street on clouds instead of the concrete. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. Nothing can ruin my date. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at booze. No, I don't care because I am on my way up and I won't stop. I won't slow down. Standing on my feet, I'm going to rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. Because mm -hmm. I know what it's like to be broke. What it's like when nothing goes your way So I'm gonna let myself enjoy The fruit from this lucky day Yeah, I am on my way Right now seems like the perfect opportunity For me to jump in there and ask you guys To hit that subscribe button And join our happy little family And don't forget to give me a thumbs up If you like this video This last one is my very most favorite I got these two bamboo lanterns from the thrift store last week and i took them outside and i painted them with my rust-oleum matte white and i gave it about three coats and i actually put shellac on it before i painted it because i was afraid of that reddy brown coming through and it did a little bit so i just kept hitting it with that spray paint and with that shellac and they came out beautifully now I'm going to work with my molds and I'm going to use resin. And this is the first time I have ever used resin, guys. I got some from a company called Hippie Crafts. And I'm so glad that they sent me this because it's opened a whole new can of worms. So what you do is you just put, you cut, it comes in two parts. And you put one part of the resin and an equal part of the hardener in. So, in essence, you're putting equal parts in. It's one and one ratio. And then what I did was put, mixed them together at that point, And then I just stirred it up really, really good to make sure that that was all, you know, mixed up. Because I've heard that if you don't have enough of the hardener or if you have too little, then it's going to be an issue. So, just make sure that you are precise on your measurements you want the if you put one cup of one you want one cup of the other okay so i pulled out my prima redesign farmhouse i that's not actually the name of it but it's got farmhouse stuff on it it's got a chicken a cow a pig and the word farmhouse i'm not a hundred percent sure what the name of this mold is um but i will put it in the description box below so i wanted that chicken and that word farmhouse and then when I realized that this resin was really cool and it's going to be an easy, pretty much an easy way to make a mold, I went nuts. I pulled out every mold that I own, guys. I made all kinds of molds. Now, the only 
part that would be a downfall, if any, for me, is that you need to wait 24 hours for your mold or your resin to harden enough to use it. And so I did this in the evening. The next morning, whenever I came downstairs to check it out, I was so excited. I had molds galore. And you know, I love to work with my molds. So I had so many different kinds, guys. Check this out. This is my B. And this one is from IOD. I have all different types of molds. Some of them are from IOD. Some of them are Prima Redesign. But they all turned out super. And I could not be happier. I just wanted to show you a little bit of the ones that I've got. I love my birds. And I mean, the detail that comes out on these is extraordinary, guys. I was so, so happy. And like I said, it's opened up a whole new can of worms. I decided to use the bees. And so what I did was I like my bee stuff to be black, except for just a little bit of the yellowish on the bees. And I just went all over and painted this, you know, just very nonchalant. But it did help it show up a lot better for the camera. I understand it is a little difficult to see that it's clear. So I painted everything black except for the bee. I did paint the most of the bee black except for uh, just kind of went over it like a distressing motion with a yellow over his wings. So I'm just going to let the video roll for a minute and you can see me painting the bees yellow and black. And I want to tell you guys what I did last week. Oh my goodness. I was actually in a collaboration with Miss Tammy from the Rusted Willow. And do you guys know that I did my video without even remembering to talk about her in the video and leave her information in the description box. This is the first time I've ever done that. And, you know, nine weeks ago I had COVID, which there's no excuse for it. I'm just a sorry human being. No, not really. But come on, guys. I cannot believe I did this. And she, I was even like, I'm so excited about our collab, but then I forgot to put her in the video. So I don't know what is going on with me. You know, they talk about the COVID brain and all that. And guys, I thought people were just full of baloney until I did get COVID. And it's just simple little things like that. Because not only I had been talking to her about doing the collab, but you have to, you know, put their information in there, talk about Tammy and her channel. So I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to leave everything in the description box below. Her channel is called The Rusted Willow. She has an amazing channel. You guys are going to love her. And please go check her out and let her know that crummy, crafty Kathy sent you her way. <laughs> So, let's keep rolling now. I've got my Debbie's DIY White Wax. And you know I've had this White Wax for an eternity. And it's just now maybe a fourth of the way down. And guys, I have boosts. I use this stuff on the daily. But it doesn't take that much. You just wipe a little bit of it all on. And then it's all preference. Some people leave it on for a whole hour before they take it off. I've heard of people leaving it on overnight before they take it off. I am impatient, so what I do is normally wipe it on, and then just a few seconds later, I wipe it off. And I lightly wipe it off. I don't wipe the majority of it off, and, and it's, it's all personal preference. So that's how I do mine. And you do you, boo. I want to show you guys the way that the bee turned out. I was so, so happy with this bee because I didn't want any bright yellow. I knew that my DIY white wax was going to knock that yellow color or, you know, soften it. Let's say, I always say knock it down, but you know what I'm saying. It softens it up. So I knew that it was going to soften it up, but when I put the white wax on it, it gave it the most perfect vintagey bee look that I could describe. It turned out so perfect. Look at this.
and not only that but it gave that crown the most beautiful color and it was just perfection like it always is So when I got everything finished, I pulled out my handy dandy pencil box that Miss Rita, one of my subscribers, sent me. And it had different sizes of popsicle sticks in it. Thank you, Miss Rita. I love you. And I'm going to use some wood glue and I'm going to put it down in the pattern that I picked. I wanted small bees on one and large bees on the other. And as you can see... I did put down the wood glue, but I also put a very small dab of hot glue just to hold it for now. And then I opened up a little bit of the masking tape and very lightly just kind of put it over the top of that so it would hold overnight and stick in place. I realized after doing this a couple of times that that hot glue, when it's out in the sun, it's just going to melt and it could make a mess on my project and I do not want that at all. I don't want to lose this project. So what I did was started using my Starbond glue, which I love Starbond. It's kind of like um, a super glue almost. You could probably, I know you could use E6000 or, you know, even the Dollar Tree super glue I'm sure would work. And you can tell by the second one that I'm doing here with that little area underneath that piece of wood where your lantern or your candles would go, I stuck some of the Walmart eucalyptus. I hope you like this as much as I do. Now, as you can tell, you can just set this out and use it with some candles as a lantern. It's really nice to have outside, I think. I'm going to be using mine hanging up under the canopy out by the pool, and I just think it's beautiful. I'm really proud of this one, and I took a lot of different angles and styled it a lot of different ways. I figured you guys would probably be like, goodness gracious, Kathy, like how many different ways are you going to show us? that you've styled this thing. <laughs> but I just really liked it and I thought it was pretty. Hey, if you have stuck with me through this whole video, I just wanna thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up and I'm gonna be seeing you guys real soon. And I just want to thank you so very much for giving me your time. I really do appreciate every single one of y'all. And I love y'all from the bottom of my heart. Until next time, I'm sending you love and laughs and, of course, DIYs. Nala, why are you laying in the tree? Well, mm -hmm. she's probably up there waiting on a bird. Exactly. Boy, she jumped right up. She's got her a little, little nesting spot up in there where she just, like a little hammock. That's a cat hammock. That's a cat hammock. I decided to do my video on birds because I've changed so much of my home decor to go along with this theme. I hope that you guys can kick back and relax and have a few laughs and enjoy the DIYs and let's just spend some time together. Now let's jump into this video. For my first DIY, I'm going to make a tabletop bird feeder or it can be a bird bath. I have this clear plate from the Dollar Tree and I also have a white candlestick from a thrift store and then I have this little bird that came from the Dollar General. I took everything outside and gave it a coat of a black spray paint. And then when that was dry, I gave it two coats of the Rust-Oleum Two Times Matte White. And then I'm gonna take everything inside and distress it. The reason why I do the black underneath is because when I distress, it just comes right through and it's really pretty that way. 
So I will use something to scrape it or I will use a sanding block. And if that doesn't work and give me the result I want, I will take the Waverly ink as I did here with my distressing brush and very lightly go around everything. I got a little heavy handed with the black distressing, but that's no problem because I just put a little bit of my white chalk paint on a distressing brush and I just very, very lightly go right back over it and it looks very natural and pretty. I grabbed one of my IOD transfer books. It's the latest one and it's the one that has the little seed packets. It's so cute. And do you know that I did not have the camera recording when I put it on the candlestick? I was so mad because I was so sure I did. But it's so easy. All you do is lay the transfer down and there's a little tool that they send and you just scratch it with the tool and it comes right off on whatever you're wanting to put it on. Now, when I get my transfers on, I like to use about a 400 grit piece of sandpaper to very, very lightly and carefully go over the top of it because it just kind of makes it look older and more antique. And I kind of think that that looks vintage and I like that. I do another transfer in just a moment, and it is recorded so you can see how to do it in case you have questions. But here is what my little bird looks like when I'm finished. He's got the black spray underneath him and then the white Rust-Oleum two times. Now, he didn't distress very good with when I just scratched, scratched over him. And so what I did was just put a little bit of the Waverly black ink on a distressing brush and I very, very lightly dry brushed over him with the black. And I felt like he needed some color and I wanted a very light yellow color on him. So I used this color called Daydream and it's just a folk art acrylic paint. And I did it the exact same way. I just kind of dry brushed it and it's a very, very tiny bit on my brush and it's super dry. <laughs> so I just very lightly went over him just to give him a little color and I added a little bit more towards the top of his head because that's kind of where birds have the brightest color on their little bodies. And since I painted him yellow, his eyes looked really strange because they were still white. So I took some truffle Waverly chalk paint on a very, very pointy <laughs> paintbrush. And I just put a very light bit in his eyes. And then I went over him with my Debbie's DIY white wax just to kind of knock down that color a little bit and make it look more natural and vintagey. Is vintage a word? Well, it is today. I'm sorry. I don't know any other way I can kind of describe him. He's, I just want him to look kind of old and distressed. You know what I'm saying? That's vintage -y. So the next thing I'm going to do is glue him on my plate. And I take some of my Star Bond glue and it's kind of like a quick set glue if you use it with the accelerator now it is a super glue and it's amazing and i use the thick kind i just put a little bit on his little feet and then i take the accelerator and you spray it on the surface that you're sticking him to and it, in two or three seconds he is stuck like chuck he is on there and he's not going anywhere. So now we are going to put the plate on the candlestick and I use the exact same thing, the thick Star Bond Super Glue, and then I spray the accelerator on the bottom of my plate. And I'm sorry it's out of frame, but I couldn't flip the plate over because of the bird being on it. Usually I would lay the plate down and place the candlestick on there, but I couldn't do it because of the bird. So I had to do it this special way. <laughs> and then I used my favorite method of distressing, my good old finger. Guys, I'm not kidding y'all. It is my favorite method of distressing anything. You can get right in there where you need to get. And so I used my Waverly Black Ink Chalk Paint 
and my finger and I went all the way around this plate to kind of finish it off and make it look like it was enameled. And by the way, to protect the little birds, I did not put any spray paint on the top of my plate. I flipped my plate over and sprayed the bottom part of my plate with spray paint. That way the little birds are not getting any particles of spray paint in their mouths if I make it into a bird bath or even the bird feeder. I also went around the bottom part of the candlestick and kind of in the middle part with a little black line so it could have an enamel look. And like I said, you can use this as a bird bath or a bird feeder. And I just styled it outside so you guys could see it on the tabletop, or actually it's on a bench, but with some bird seed in there just so you can get the idea. And the bottom part is actually heavy, so I'm not worried about it falling over. I think this is really cute, and let me know what you guys think. Now, on to DIY number two. I got this cute little planner at the thrift store for only 50 cents, and I took it outside and gave it two coats of my white Rust-Oleum spray paint in the color matte white. And for some reason, I'm in slow motion here, and I'm so sorry for that. I'm going to try to make this video as enjoyable as it possibly can. And so what I did was I took another one of my IOD transfer books, and this one is actually made for, like, pots and plants and things like that. And I think this color is so beautiful. It's a blue color. They have black, blue, and white inside this book. It's their crockery stamps, uh, but in a transfer. And guys, I get all of my transfers. I get all of my IOD products from Milton's daughter. I'm going to leave her link down in the description box. And just for my viewers, she gives you guys 10% off all your IOD products. So you definitely need to buy those from her. I've had a lot of people asking me where I buy them from. Well, it's Milton's daughter. So what I did was I cut out the two that I wanted. And actually on one of them, it was a smaller piece because you don't have to use the whole transfer. You can use like pieces. And this is what the book looks like. It's called Traditional Pots is the name of these transfers. So this first one that I'm going to put on is these beautiful three little angels. And as soon as you place it down, you get it stuck and it sticks down just like a sticker basically and a lot of times honestly i like to use my fingernail because it's a really good tool guys i'm telling you you know we really underestimate our fingers <laughs> i'm just telling you and then i cut the sides because it just if it's a a shape like this it makes it easier to get that transfer on or it does for me you use your little tool that they send or your fingernail or whatever you want to scratch it with and you just rub it and you pull up the little film as you're rubbing and it will stick and then when you get that off you burnish it and burnishing simply means you take that little plastic film that it came on and kind of rub it in a circular motion all over that stamp and it basically just makes it stick down better on the second one, since it had words at the top, I thought it would be a lot simpler just to cut the words off and put them over that top of that little area. And then I'm going to put the other piece down on the bottom. So I did the exact same thing. I just put my words up there and used my little tool to rub it off. And I did the same thing with the bottom. And on the one that says Le Hardin, where I cut the two little side pieces off, I thought it would be cute to stick them in the middle of my little planter up there at the top. And that's exactly what I did. And that's what I meant by you can use pieces of their transfers. It doesn't have to be the whole transfer. You can use like just words off of one. Or in this case, these are just a couple of little roses. And you just put them together and it looks like it was made that way. It's so beautiful. And I'm not sponsored or anything, but I must say that IOD is always a product that I know, I know that I know that I'm going to be happy with. And to me, it's well worth any money spent. 
because sometimes you pay for quality, and that's in this case. A lot of people say, well, they're kind of a little pricey sometimes. Yes, it is, but they do last for quite a while, and their products are, they're just always right on spot. And then I gave it a quick little sanding over with a 400 um, grit sandpaper because I just like that look. Like I said, it makes it look more vintage -y. <laughs> Then I took a very small piece of a popsicle stick that I cut, and I'm going to use my Starbond glue and the accelerator to glue this to the back right side of my little planter. Then I simply took that little bird, the other bird that I had painted outside, and I distressed him a little bit, and I placed him with the Starbond glue right on the top of that little piece of popsicle stick. I did that just so it wouldn't be such a thin line to glue him to, so he kind of has like a little stand there. Then I just took some Dollar Tree jute and went around the very top of the handle, and I took my lighter and burn off all the little fuzzies. Then I took my Waverly ink chalk paint, and I gave my little bird a very good dry brushing, and then I kind of went back over him with a little bit of white, like I told you before, because I got a little heavy-handed with the black. And then I used the good old finger and went all the way around the rims of the top of these planters and around the bottom to finish it off. And I hope you guys like this one. This one is probably my favorite of all today's DIYs, and it was the easiest. And I styled it with some cute little faux flowers and you know me, I had to make a couple of little clay bird eggs to go inside the other place. And I just kind of painted them with a dark blue color to go with the ink that's on the front of my planters. I really like this one. Did I mention that I would love to have you as part of our family here on YouTube? All you have to do is hit that little red subscribe button and you're in the family and there's a bell beside it and when you hit that, YouTube's going to let you know every time that I put on a video. And if you will, please give me a big thumbs up because it really helps support my channel out here on YouTube and I promise when I see you, I'm going to give you a big old Tennessee bear hug for it. At the thrift store, I found this cute little antique looking wash bin. I think that's what you call them. It's the stuff where people would wash their faces in back in the old days. But I took a little bit of truffle paint because at first I wanted to distress it with brown, but later I changed my mind. And I just would kind of went around any areas that I thought that I would be distressing with the truffle. I purposely do not do a full coat on this. There's no reason for it because my thought was to spray paint over it and then I would be just distressing and the brown would appear underneath. But then later I decided I wanted to distress it with black. So this part really doesn't matter. But then I took it outside and gave it two coats of the Rust-Oleum Matte White spray paint. Here's what everything ended up looking like after I gave it two coats of the Rust-Oleum Two Times White in Ultra Matte. I took a little bit of the Waverly ink, which is their black color, and I'm using my favorite distressing method right here, and I'm just going around where these little beads are, and this is just a Dollar Tree charger. I painted it also. It was gold, and I painted it the white color, and I'm just going around it really quick so it looks kind of like enamel. Then I use my finger and the Waverly color ink and I go all around the top of this picture and this picture has the most beautiful accents on it and so I used my finger and I had very very little almost no paint on my finger and I kind of traced over those ornate designs because I didn't want them to be a bright black but I did want them to show up and a paintbrush just would not do the trick because if I used a paintbrush there would be paint strokes everywhere so like I said once again the finger wins as the best method of distressing 
I just really took my time and I went slow and I used my finger to do the other side. I went a little heavier on the other side because I was just trying to see what I could get here. And then I went down the sides of the handles and all around the bottom because this picture had the most beautiful accents all over it, guys. It was gorgeous. And it's like a mini basin. Do you know what I mean in the picture? It's not the size of a normal size little wash bin. It's like a mini size. And I just thought it was so cute and different when I saw it at the thrift store. I had to have it. And I'm not going to be selling this one in the booth. And I left this next part in for your enjoyment. <laughs> that ugly face I was making at the camera to make sure it was turned on. But anyways, I used my DAS clay and my IOD molds. And it's my favorite IOD mold, the one that has the birds on it. And I just pop it into the freezer for 15 minutes after I get the mold made. And it's hard enough to pull out. It comes out of that mold just like a beauty. And so here what I'm doing is just using my finger, my favorite method of distressing, by the way, and I'm just going over his little feathers with the black color. I wanted the main color of his body to kind of be white, but have the black distressing so that he would really pop when I put him on that picture. Now get ready for more pure enjoyment because it's about to start again when I put this bird on the picture. Look at this. What is up with me? But I was standing up, so I was making sure that you guys could see what I was doing. I'm such a beaut, man. But anyways, I take the top bond glue because it is the best to use, I think, with these IOD molds. And I'm going to slap that little bird right on that picture. And by the way, my bird's tail fell off. But guess what? Whenever you put the two pieces together, you'll never know. And I'm just letting y'all know you will never be disappointed with IOD products or seeing my fat arm in this shot because that's all you can see and I didn't realize that and I'm sorry. So I put his body on the picture and then I put his little tail on the picture right behind his body and then I just take a piece of masking tape and put it all over the little bird and that way he will be held in that position and he will stick that way to my little picture and then here i go again guys i'm trying to get the camera straightened up so i can get a good shot which i pretty much didn't and i also have another mold that says farmhouse on it and it is a prima redesign mold but here I am using my finger to go over the word farmhouse, and it looks like a little ribbon, and I'm just using my finger to color it because it's the best method of distressing. You got it, guys. I'm on a roll today. And that arm, somebody stopped me. So I took that little word, and I put the tight bond glue on the back of it and I just kind of put it toward the top of the picture and another piece of tape and let everything freeze that way and it did freeze beautifully on that picture. Let me know how you guys think that it turned out. Hey there, my name is Crafty Kathy, and I'm the owner and creator of Kit's Vintage Farmhouse here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I want to thank you for coming to my channel and spending your time with me today. 
I would like to ask you for us just to clear our minds. There is so much negativity in this world, and I want my channel to be a place where you can come and escape from it, and we just love each other and have a good time. I also wanted to ask you to hit that little red subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. I would love to have you here. There's always room, and we will always have a good time. I won't let you down. This is the channel where you find love, laughs, and DIYs. So anyways, we got high-end, vintage-inspired home decor for resale, and let's jump in. On the first DIY of the day, I'm going to redo this old tray. As you can see, I upcycled this tray a year ago. I was thinking about throwing it away, and I thought, man, I just can't do it. I've got to breathe some new life into it. So I took that mirror off the front, and you see how filthy it was. I cleaned it up really good. I took it outside and I gave it two coats of my Rust-Oleum two times in the matte white. I even had painted that bottom part white there and I'm just using my dishwasher Mod Podge and dishwasher only because that's the only one I grabbed. I mean, really, you can use any Mod Podge. It doesn't matter. And I gave it a real good coat and I have this beautiful piece of fabric that I got from Walmart last year and it was just big enough to cover this. It says Paris on it and it has French writing and roses and I'm just going to Mod Podge it on the front of my tray. When you're decoupaging fabric, you want to use a little bit more Mod Podge than you normally would. You don't want it to be goopy and just totally wet, but you want to get enough on there so that fabric's going to stick. And then I use my little brayer to make sure there's no wrinkles or bubbles going on. And then I just went over the top of it and I left it alone for about four hours so it could dry. Then I put that little outer ring back on it, and it had five or six nails that held it together, little finishing nails, and I just put all of those back in. I was so excited because just so happened this is the day that I had got in my shipment of DIY paint, and I'm dying to try this color called Skeleton Key. It's a pretty gray color. Now, I have this little bird, and I made it out of clay the last time I did my IOD molds. It was just left over, and I figured that we're going to use it because I want to see what this bird looks like in gray. So, all it needed was one coat. This paint is so different than anything that you buy in the store. It's clay-based, and it's also very highly pigmented, which means most of the time you only need one coat. Now, I just started using this paint recently, but I will never be able to go back to regular old paint after using this because it's just the best. And a quick tip is use some Vaseline around the rims of your paint when you're closing them up, and that way they're not going to get that old crusty junk in them, and it's hard to open them up. That's just a quick little tip I thought I'd throw in there. I want to keep these paints in pristine condition. So I grabbed my DIY white wax and I put a little bit on my bird. Well, I put a lot of bit on my bird and I just wiped off the excess and it was so beautiful against that skeleton key color. And I'm going to put my bird kind of in the middle but look like he's in flight. I took my tight bond glue, which is what I love to use to get my molds to stick, and I put it all over the bottom, and I just placed him where I wanted to. Now, I wanted to put a word up at the top of this to make it look complete because it didn't look like it was finished to me. And for the life of me, I could not think of any word that seemed to go with it. So in the end, I come up with the word soar because, you know, the bird's soaring. And I thought, okay, that sounds good. And yes, I spelled it right. I didn't spell it like I've got a sore arm. <laughs> the first time that you use these stamps, they're from IOD also. You have to run just a little bit of a um, sandpaper over them. It just helps them get a better grip. And I did this in black. And I also have one of those little boards that you can put it on. I think it's called a thin stamp. And it just helps, like, keep your words where they're lined up correctly. And I wanted mine to go like, like a rainbow. Do you know what I'm saying? Not directly straight across. So anyways, that's what I come up with. I hope you like this one.
on DIY number two, we're going to work on this bread box that I had bought from an older lady that was about to do an estate sale. Now, the first thing that I did after I cleaned it up really good was sand it. And after I sanded it, I put about three coats of shellac on it. Anytime that I do a brown wood, a lighter color than what it is, I go ahead and spray it with shellac. That way it don't turn that old yellowy color. And then I wasted all that time with that work. So look at these beautiful decoupage pictures that my friend Lori sent me from Milton's daughter. I promised myself I was going to be done with the bird DIYs, but this is the prettiest one in the bunch. And I'm going to put it on the front of that bread box door. Now, I have the bread box disassembled at this point because I cleaned all the hinges up. And the way that I'm going to get this decoupage paper on the front of that is just a Mod Podge it like you do anything else when you decoupage. You just put down your Mod Podge, and I put a decent layer down, not as much as for fabric, and then it just sticks right on there. I made sure to go in small sections and I used my brayer to make sure there was no wrinkles or bubbles, but since this is a little bit thicker, there wasn't any wrinkles or bubbles. And as you see, I went in small sections. I always start from the very center is where I start pushing down and then going towards the outside. That way, if there's bubbles, you just push them right off the side. I waited till the Mod Podge was totally dry and I used a 120 grit sandpaper and I go around the edges. And as you see, I don't go from side to side. I go away from the object that I'm trying to get that off of and it comes right off of there. And then I made sure to go around and seal all those edges up really good with the Mod Podge and I gave it a very super thin light coat over the top. I left the hinges the color they were because when I cleaned them, they were so beautiful and they're like this brassy color and it just matched that perfect. So I just went ahead and screwed those back on and then I felt like I still wasn't totally done yet. So I'm going to make some molds and I put some cornstarch in my molds. This is my trimmings mold from IOD. And guys, I'm going to leave the link in the description box below. If you buy anything IOD from Milton's daughter, she gives my subscribers 10% off if you use the code CRAFTYCATHY10. And I'll leave all that info I just told you in the description box below. So I just heat the clay up in my hands and I place it in the mold. Now, these make four different molds and so I only needed one but I needed to do it two times to get enough to go across the front of my little bread box. When I finish my mold I always stick it in the freezer for 15 minutes so it'll harden up and it slides out real easy. Then I just use my tight bond glue put it on the back and place it where I want it and that was at the bottom part of my little bread box because the trimmings mold is almost like a border. It would be a good way to describe it. It makes really pretty borders on anything that you're doing. Then I'm going to use that skeleton key once again, and I'm going to go over this and paint it with skeleton key, and I let it dry real good. And I finished that off with a little white wax and wiped off the excess. The rest of the DIYs are going to be super quick, but I hope you like this one. Where you will find peace. Take a step into the river. Get down on your knees. Come to the mountain. We'll take it in the view. You will find the life is. If you're enjoying my video so far, there's a few things I'd like to ask you. If you would, hit the like button because that really helps me out on YouTube. And hey, subscribe! I want you to be a part of my family. I would absolutely love to have you. And there's a bell beside it. When you ring that bell, YouTube's going to let you know every time that I put out a video. But come on and subscribe. 
and let's go into our next one. I have this basket that I painted white in one of my last videos. And then I have this stencil that says antiques, flea markets, vintage, collectibles. It says all kinds of stuff. And I cut out a small piece of drop cloth. I actually cut a slit in it and then rip it so it gets those pretty edges. And I'm just going to use black acrylic paint and I'm stenciling in the word antiques and collectibles. I'm just going to use a very little bit of my hot glue and just put it on the four corners and I'm going to put that on my basket. And then I take three medium sized buttons that I had purchased at Walmart. They have like roses on them and I'm going to stick those three in the center between those two words. And that's basically all I did to this one besides put some flowers in it. It was really super quick and super cute. The next one is one that I had done at Christmas time, and it is a plate holder, like a paper plate holder. And as you see, it has a reindeer on it, and it's dark colors. So it's either toss it or redo it, and so I'm going to redo it to match what I've got going on now. I took it outside, and I sprayed it two times with my Rust-Oleum two times matte white, and then I'm going to take some of the IOD transfers. And these transfers are from the book Ephemeral Melange, the one that has the little seed packets in it that I absolutely love. Now, what I like about their transfers is you don't have to use that whole piece. So in order to make this DIY look right, I'm gonna cut off the bottom half and put it on the front part there. And then up at the top, I'm gonna put that one single rose. And that way it'll kind of go together and be a little bit more cohesive. Now to get the transfers on, you just take that white backing off of it, lay it down, and then use that little tool that they send with all their transfers, and you just rub it across it. And then when it comes off of there, you just burnish it, and that just means use that film that it just came off of, and you just rub it all over the top of it. It knocks down the shine, and it just helps it stick really well. And then I also added the words that was on this little transfer too. And you don't have to put them in the way that it actually came. You can put it any way you want it and it always looks great. And then, like I said, I added that part to the top. It still didn't look right to me, so I added a couple more words and the date up at the top and then a couple more at the bottom to finish it off. I hope you like this one. Super easy. As a personal preference, I like to go over mine with like a 320 grit sandpaper and that way it makes it look a little old and vintagey. This next one is just as quick and easy. This is a little shelf that I bought at the thrift store for three bucks, and I think it is so pretty, and it's got that color of wood that we definitely need to make sure that we put the shellac on. So I cleaned it up real good, gave it some shellac, and then I gave it two coats of my Rust-Oleum two times in the matte white. Then when I brought it back inside, I did a little wet distressing on it. And all that is is where you wet your rag a little bit while it's still slightly, it's not damp, but I guess you could say it was kind of tacky. And I just wet my rag and went over certain spots that I would want the paint to be pulled up from. And that's all I did on this one. Now the next one is this cute little box that I bought at the Goodwill just the other day for like $2.99. And it had a little plant in it that desperately needed to be cleaned. 
So I took it out and cleaned it up and I took all the hardware off and I painted the hardware black. A company called Super Clean sent me this cleaner and it's a cleaner and degreaser so I thought we'd give it a try. I put the hardware in it and if you could see when I shook it up it immediately turned brown because it was so dirty and it came out spotless. Now to color my hardware black what I did was put some black paint in a little container and just a little bit of water and I painted the bigger pieces with a brush, but those little tiny screws, I just dropped them down in that black water and then let it dry and it colored it black. I had painted my little box white, of course, because white is what really sells. And I'm gonna use some IOD transfers and I had this little tiny piece of a flower left over. And so I just laid it down and I did the actually I used my fingernail because it didn't need much to get that transfer off. And this was a tiny piece of a bird. It was basically just the head that was left because I had messed up on it when I first started trying to figure out how to use these. So I'm just going to put these two pieces on the front of my little box and I put my plant back in it. And that's all I did to this one. The last one was the picture of Little Boy Blue that I bought a few weeks ago, and he had a black frame, and I simply just took it apart and painted the frame white, and what a difference a little paint makes. Sometimes that's all it takes. And guys, if y'all stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to thank you and tell you how much I love you and appreciate you, and let's watch some bloopers. Before we get into the bloopers, I must give a quick disclaimer. I would not want to offend anyone by the Bobby Joe character. She is simply a depiction of what people in my family here in Tennessee is like. Just because Bobby Joe's a hillbilly doesn't mean that I think that everyone in Tennessee are hillbillies. However, everyone in my family certainly is. <laughs> so anyways, I do have a cousin named Bobby Joe and my cousins are just like this character. She's only meant to make people laugh and be lighthearted because like I said in the beginning, the world is so full of negativity. I want my channel to be a place where people can come and laugh and be lighthearted. There's many people that have sent me messages that said that it just made them laugh. They were having a bad day until they saw how stupid this character was or how funny she was and it made them giggle. One lady had even just lost her husband, and she said, I haven't laughed in weeks, but that skit was so crazy, I just found myself laughing again. To me, it's worth offending somebody if I can make somebody's day brighter, because that's what I want to do. I want to make people happy. I want to inspire people. So anyway, that's enough of this humbub. Let's get into some Bobby Joe, 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 Joe. <laughs> Oh, 
woman could ever be. And if you give me a call, I'll show you what kind of lady that I am. Huh? I know I'm married, Mama. Shut your mouth. We'll just talk about that later, all right? I'm trying to get to Hollywood. Be quiet. No matter how I have to get there, I'm not going to get there. Was that recording the whole time? So anyways, I don't understand why his team arrested me. You saw how innocent that was. I do not understand. I even told him that I'd make him some Baina weenies and some spam. But I guess he don't like Baina weenies and spam. I hope he knows what they are. But anyways, I love you guys and I will be seeing you real soon. I just wanted to let you know what's going on in my world. Alright, so I'll talk to you later. Bye! Sabby gets really, really jealous when he doesn't get to be the star of the show. So are you ready to sing our theme song? Okay. We got love and laughs and DIYs. We got some love and laughs and DIYs. We got some love and laughs and DIYs. We got love and laughs and DIYs. Yeah. Woohoo, baby. Oh, yeah. You're a star, Savvy. Yeah, you're a star. You're a star, you're a star, you're a star, yeah, baby. <laughs> Make a good boy. <laughs>